so this is what I have for a little fuel tank. Howdy fixers, so today we're going after the power steering pump on this Chevy 1500, it's a 5.7, and it's making a weird noise, it's actually, when you turn the steering wheel, it's making the steering wheel vibrate, like digger, 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 that's kind of how it sounds like, but, so we are going after, and it is a 99, 98, and this is, it might even be the same for anything like 95 up to like 2000 when they did the switch over but first thing we're going to do is make this shroud out of the way so you got all these tens 10 10 two tens or one ten and then we're going to go after our fan get an air hammer on this break this loose and then we're going to have to get our ac out of the way but we can just loosen it and get it out of the way once we get our belt off All right, so I already took my belt off because I was taking this with the air hammer and trying to get this off and it's just not gonna happen. So I'm gonna take my chain tool, wrap around this pulley here, keep it nice and tight while I try to hammer it off. So let's see how that works. fan off with the 36 millimeter nut that holds this on get that off now we're gonna go ahead and take our AC compressor unbolt it and place it out of the way over here somewhere so we gotta get this bracket off but first after I get the AC I'm gonna go after my power steering pump pulley so on this power steering pulley business there are a couple different types of pullers this one is the thicker of the two and it's got a fit in here just right so it doesn't pull all the way out so you get this on there and pull it off. There it goes. I'm going to take these 15s and 30s. See here, this will be a little bit of a bracket with a thin bolt right here that's gonna fall down, and that bolt is lined in place. So I'm gonna try to get you in the right spot here, you can see, but there's actually a bracket onto the block, that bolt there, and there's one that comes from the front, and they're both 14s, I believe, and that keeps your bracket. So we had that 14 bolt back here, and there's a 14 here. You might have to loosen up this bracket to move enough so that you're pump will fall down. So next, is I'm going to get these bolts here off, get my bracket off, and then I'm going to get my line off, and then I'm going to get both my lines off, and unplug this sensor. So this is a 5.8, I'm going to take that loose, and then on our hose here, we actually have to cut this part off or get our hose off, and this should flop out of here. Okay, so I'm going to get the snap ring off, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to work our sensor out of the way here. And you also got to get these 11 30 seconds, I think that's what it is. These nuts off these, 11 30 seconds, get these out of the way and put on your new pump. Okay, so snap rings are off, that part is off, and then we're going to go and pull this off. And then, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this off. Okay. So this is a 30 millimeter, and I'm going to work it back out, and we'll get it out of here. Right. So 
So once your big screw is out of there, this is the new one. You want to make sure that's in place still, that can fall out. And what it is, is just a pressure relief valve for your pump. And you want to make sure that that's in there. Sometimes you can install it without that in there and your pump won't work. This actually causes your pump to work. So I went ahead and I cleaned this all off. Put it back in place. And we gotta make sure this gets lined up with the bottom where my hose was. So this looks about right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this in place, tighten it down, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put my sensor back on. Alright, so then I'm back in there to make sure my lines were lined up in the correct spot with my bracket that I installed, and you wanna go ahead and put your connector back on, and then you gotta make sure that that bracket's in the right place along the line, it's not gonna touch anymore. So I got my pump back in there, and the bracket's holding it on right now. So then I'm gonna put my other stuff back on. So now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down my 13s and my 15 bolts here for my bracket. And you wanna do it evenly, because if you do one bolt more than the other, the others won't start. So you wanna do it slowly, just do it all the way around so they properly go into place. So this is what the tool looks like, and it's gonna force my pulley back into place. So in this step, I'm using my change tool again and I'm putting it around the pulley because for some reason my tool just allows the pulley to keep moving the balloon. So I'm holding the pulley so I can actually torque down my stuff. Because if you don't, then it's working its way out. So I went ahead and I got my belt all lined up and that's the way it's supposed to be. And you want to make sure your pulley looks great on your power steering as far as belt alignment. And then so I'm going to go ahead and use my hammer to get this back into place like it was taking it off. And I'm just making sure that it's good and tight, it's not going to come off. So you want to make sure that the set's filled up to like the proper height. And then I'm going to show you a trick and put my thumb over the power steering bottle and be able to make the airtight seal. And it won't leak oil I'm trying to put it into the reservoir. Okay. So now that I, I have my front wheels up off the ground, my reservoir is full, I'm going to turn the key on, just turn it to stop, to stop like 10 times just to get all the air out because this will actually... If you get air in these systems, they'll actually snap the steering gear in half sometimes, or the shaft on your power steering pump. So you just want to make sure you do some pretty good compra compra precautions to make sure there's no air in the system before you start it up. Howdy fixers! So that is how you do the power steering pump on your Chevy pickup. Um, I think that's about from like 96, 90, 96 up to about 2000s when they switched over to the 5.3 or the um, different style of the LS motors and stuff like that. Um, but this is on a 350, 305, uh, C1500, K1500, um, Sierra, GMC, all, you know, the same kind of animal there. Is that when you do your power steering pump, you want to make sure there's that valve in the back and you want to make sure that it gets put back in place this one actually came with it and if you don't put that in there you're not going to have built up pressure for your pump because that's actually what causes the pressure for your pump to have your assisted steering with your steering gearbox um <clears throat> and there's possible you can put that stuff in backwards and you don't want to do with that <laughs> um so you just want to make sure that that looks good um other than that, I had a problem with the power steering pump pulley, and that's why I had the chain tool around there. Usually, you don't have to do that, um, but yeah, that's just a helpful tip. Um, just want to say thank you for taking time out of your day to watch my video, and I really appreciate whoever has subscribed, supporting my channel. I really appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions, just give me a comment, like, <clears throat> all that good stuff down below, and I'm more than happy to answer your questions. Um, let's see. But, uh, yeah, so uh, I'm almost at a thousand, so I think a little after a thousand, it's got some stuff going on here this month, but I'm, I'm going to try to do some kind of a giveaway, I don't know what, maybe just like some, a little bit of a tool, like a quarter inch ratchet set or something like that, but try to do something um, to get back to you guys, because you guys have been so helpful, and I just really, really appreciate all your comments and all that good stuff, but uh, if you're just coming across my channel, give me a like, give me a subscribe, um, <clears throat> tell a friend about it, because this is... A lot of helpful information, a lot of stuff that people aren't taught necessarily, and it's, I feel like it's helpful. It's stuff that I didn't really 
have a whole lot of when I was growing up. So just if you need an extra tip, you try to ask somebody, not everybody knew, but YouTube's great for that because you can learn all this information and not really have to go searching too far. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, if you liked what you liked, give me a like, give me a subscribe. So have a good one. Thanks.